What was your experience? It's a movie. Well, Thank you. My, uh, shooting it, you mean? Uh, cold. <laughs> uh, I'm not really an outdoor man. I don't even have winter clothes, even if I live in Sweden. I just stay indoors from uh, October to April. Uh, <laughs> but Hans Peter Molen manages to drag me out every four years or something, and he always places me in really horrible <laughs> environments. Um, so I'm basically cold, yes. <laughs> Last time you got a lot of sex, what were you complaining about? <laughs> uh, that was more fun. <laughs> I've said that the uh, reason why there are not very many women in this film and why they leave is that they are a lot smarter than the men. They realize how to get the hell out of there before it gets nasty. <laughs> uh, and uh, it could of course be that uh, I was more attracted to men. I never thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> Say no more. <laughs> I don't know what the funny thing about death is. is so, maybe this is the way it is. Maybe it is not. And I'm closer to it than I most of the people sitting here. And I don't think about it too much. In but in this case, this has to do <coughs> something, is something with the cinema. It's a chain of uh, errors. Das is, uh, uh, das is of faults. So it is funny. We, we, we're and laughing and about it and we're Sachen admired. We're attracted by things uh, that end in death and, and violence. And this is part of the uh, great and American and cinema linked to it. And we always think it is acceptable. Apparently, we do have various um, categories into which uh, we uh, categorize uh, death and violence. I don't have an answer to the question what I think is funny about death. Nothing really. Uh, just recently, there have been a lot of funerals where I went to people I knew well, and I can't say that I thought it was particularly funny. And I bought uh, a place in a cemetery in Zurich, not too expensive. And, uh, well... I'd like to know from Mr. Moland uh, something about your fascination with violence. Like, in almost all of your films, there is blood and crime. So please tell me something about it. Um. You sicko. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if I have a fascination with violence, but I think uh, um, in my previous film, it was uh, a character who was trying to avoid violence, uh, who everybody else wanted to uh, engage in the revenge that they felt was just. And the character that Stellan played was doing everything he could to just sit still and be a nice guy. This film, it's a guy who can't be restrained and who does far too much. The violence is, I think, something that lurks in our depths as human beings. And uh, we thankfully restrain ourselves most of the time. And occasionally it erupts like in, in his character. Um, I'm interested in what violence does to normal people, normal, presumably well-adjusted people. Uh, just arbitrary, sick violence doesn't necessarily fascinate me. But violence as something that we all try to avoid, I think, is quite interesting. Well, the Norwegians think that I'm Norwegian because I've made so many films there. They think I'm a Norwegian <laughs> with a speech impediment. <laughs> a question to Mr. Gums. We love you in Berlin. As uh, the one who played in Engel über Berlin. And uh, do you like destroying our Kitsch uh, image of you? Well, no, sorry, but I think this is silly. I do have a profession and I like playing different roles. If I said that uh, the one uh, thing was Himmel über Berlin, Wings of Desire, and I have to stick to this role of 
wings of desire for the next 50 years, I'd become crazy. I would be dead by now, really. Uh, this is not possible, simply speaking. And uh, I'm not that interested in the honor of Berlin. Mr. Wolverite, the mayor, is responsible for it, and he does a good job. What shall I say to that? I am an actor. I am mainly and only an actor, and I like uh, doing very, very different films. This is my life. Voila, that's it. And how much uh, room was it for improvising with the, with the actors? How much freedom did you give the actors? Well, they, they never follow the screenplay, never, never. <laughs> but I think it's very important in a screenplay that you leave, out, leave some room for those to enter, you know, room for the direction, room for the acting, because it's, it, the, the only important thing is that it lives on, on the screen. It is not important if, if the words are followed, you know. So, so I think we have a very, a very nice way of working together that, that uh, it's kind of handed over and it's like a recipe for food, you know, and then the chef goes into the kitchen and stuff happens, you know. Every day while you're on the set, strive to make the scenes and the situations come alive and bring vitality to it. Uh, nobody's going to give you any awards for following the strict letter of a, <laughs> of a script. And least of all the screenwriter, if you go back to him and said, I did exactly what's said in the script and it sucks, you know. <laughs> <laughs> He's not going to applaud you. So, you know, our obligation is to make it as good as possible. And one way of doing that is to, you know, keep dancing while you have a chance. And, and that's what we do.